Lord, our Heavenly Father, your hiding place, you are our fortress. You are the shade to which we take cover. And Lord of glory, we are saved. May you, gracious Lord, continue to make manifest thy presence and thy will for us as we remain looking up to you, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Time has come for us to sit at thy feet to learn from the word. Master, speak that we may listen. A vessel of your own purpose, I pray, shall use me for your own glory as you minister to us. And gracious Lord, as I surrender myself to you, for your own glory and for our blessing. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, praise and worship. Let us appreciate the praise and worship once again. Amen. And a mighty hand clap to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I feel humbled uh, to be the one ministering the word of the Lord to us this morning. Let me take this opportunity to thank the vicar. The Venerable Canon Major Dunfi for granting me this opportunity. And with totality of humility, I also want to acknowledge uh, once again the presence of a bishop in the house. Amen. Um, it's not easy to proclaim the message of the Lord when one more senior to you is in the house. So, Bishop, I feel humble that even in your presence, I can have this opportunity to proclaim the message of the Lord. Actually, as I was told, Bishop is coming and you are the one preaching. I started asking God, is, the, is it right? <laughs> but now that I'm here, it is right in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Number two. When Bishop is in the house and you are proclaiming the message, you see the theology, Sana, because he knows the theology more than you do. And around your pulpit. So I told myself, don't go so much theology. Theology ni yetu. Amen. But when Bishop is in the house, you save the theology. So I thought, which way do we go? And God gave me a story, praise the Lord, that I want to share with us. And in that story comes the message of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, God has preempted so much so far on the message that we were to share this morning through the family of our brother Mayaki. Yes. Um, our sister gave a very moving testimony. And uh, she said, let us proclaim the goodness of the Lord. And so our theme this morning, as we share the, the word of the Lord, is my song of the Lord. My song. That was her song of the Lord. What is your song of the Lord? Praise the Lord. So the theme of our message is my song of the Lord, drawn from verse 1 of uh, Isaiah chapter 12. In that day, you will say, praise the Lord. On that day, you will say. And again in verse 4, in that day, you will say. So, what is your saying of the Lord? Now, there's a story I want us to share. Very fast, 10 minutes to talk to me, Maliza. Amen. Now, come at 10 minutes, Emesha just ask me to sit down and I'll obey. Praise the Lord. When some things happen in our lives, we don't know where to turn to or whom to call upon. Listen to this story. A familiar story, by the way. Uh, there's a man whose name is. Horatio, 
Spafford. Horatio Spafford. Kwaya washa jua nasema nani. Praise the Lord. Horatio was a very successful attorney and a real estate investor. He lost a great fortune in the great Chicago fire of 1871. What did he lose? When we are talking of a fire, maybe the office was raised. Sinikweli? Raised down with all his documents. Remember, he's, a, he's an attorney. So you can, you can imagine the office of an attorney burnt down 100% with all the records, with all that, everything about your work is burnt down. So he lost a great fortune. Then around the same time, his four-year son died of scarlet fever. Around the same time, you have lost everything, your son passes on. Then he started thinking the way out. And he thought a vacation would do his family some good. He sent his wife and four daughters on a ship to England, planning to join them after he finished some pressing business at home. So they went on ahead of him for a holiday. However, while crossing the Atlantic Ocean, the ship was involved in a terrible collision and sank. More than 200 people lost their lives, including all the four of his precious daughters. His wife, Anna, survived the tragedy. Upon arriving in England, she sent a telegram. Those of us who were uh, with gray hairs know what a telegram is. Gen Z's might not know, or even have an idea of what a telegram is. But it was an equivalent of an SMS, but it comes through the post office, okay? So short message. So she sent a telegram. Upon arriving in England, she sent a telegram to her husband that began saved alone. You can imagine you are the one receiving the telegram and your wife is telling you, saved alone. What shall I do? The end of the telegram. Horatio immediately set sail for England. At one point during his voyage, the captain of the ship Aware of the tragedy that had struck the Spafford family, summoned to tell him that they were now passing over the spot where the shipwreck had occurred. I'm sure by this time Horatio is guessing why the wife told him, saved alone. As Horatio thought about his daughter's words, his daughter's, Words of comfort and hope filled his heart and mind. By now, he had already now been told the story through the telegram and the pinpointing of where the accident occurred, and he knew he had lost his daughters. He wrote those comforting words down, and I've since become a well-beloved hymn when peace like a river. Praise the Lord. Uh, I think that is the end of the story. It's not a very sweet story. I think it's a very hurting and devastating experience for Horatio and his family. In that day, you will say, I will praise you, Lord, although you are angry with me. 
Your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. Praise the Lord. This is the experience of the children of Israel when they had been taken to exile and a remnant has come back to the land of promise. And this remnant is turning to God. You can imagine Horatio, his wife and his daughters, set on a voyage on a holiday, for a holiday, and then it is all tragedy. For the children of Israel, when they were set or sent to exile, I don't think they were going for a holiday. God was angry with them. God had decided to flog them, and they were sent to exile. I'm sure the kind of experiences they went through and God ultimately brought the remnant back to Israel. The kind of fires they may have gone through, something they would call a fire experience, something they would call a Horatio experience, they were still left a remnant. And when they came back to the land of promise, God still showered them with his love. When peace like a river. You can imagine the kind of experience Horatio went through. And he can still afford to stand and glorify the Lord. In summary, dearly beloved, we are talking, talking about God, my salvation. Verse 2. Verse 2. Surely, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. You can imagine what Horatio was going through. God is my salvation. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength. So, my saying of the Lord, Amid this experience, Horatio talks of God being his salvation. He talks of God being his strength. And he talks of God. This version says defense, but there's a version that was read to us, talks of God, my song. Praise the Lord. Yes, my song. Dearly beloved, there are experiences we go through. And when you go through such experiences, you realize that indeed it takes God for you to declare your salvation. That is why Mrs. Horatio writes to, her, to him and tells him, saved alone. Dearly beloved, we go through a lot of danger every other day of our lives. There are certain experiences that we go through and we are not even aware. Sometimes I look at the YouTube um, cl clips and you realize somebody misses death just by a whisper, uh, a whisker, sorry. Very near death. Maybe, uh, let me give it 1% for lack of a better word. 1% of a second of a second to lose your life. We go through such experiences, by the way, some without our knowledge. But you are saved alone. That is why you will talk of God my salvation. Then God my strength. You go through certain experiences that you realize you are weakened. You try to gather some strength even to think about the situation or the circumstance and you realize you are strengthless. It is God who becomes your strength. There are certain situations you, are, you go through and you don't even know what to think. And it makes you weak. Even to talk about them becomes very difficult. But remember, if you made God your strength, he shall make you strong. 
For when you are weak, he is strong. He, because that strength comes from the Lord. Then the Lord, my song. Sometimes you go through a situation and you want to testify of the Lord. I love the song our sister sang. She might not know it was a song. But I'm sure that is a testimony that she does not shy in giving wherever she goes. Praise the Lord. The Lord, my healer, for he is indeed Jehovah Shammah. Praise the Lord. Yes. So, it's a song upon her tongue. What is a song? To me, a song is something that you say repeatedly. Praise the Lord. Something that you is ever on your tongue. And sometimes you formulate a tune that goes with it and automatically it becomes a song. As opposed to uh, uh, the, the, the experience of uh, our brother uh, Rashford, I think at the end of the day, there are things that we go through and they become a song. If not that experience, we, would be, we wouldn't be having that song, When Peace Like a River, that comforts us even when things are not going easy. Praise the Lord. That's why I'm saying I wouldn't want to go into a lot of theology because I would have had interpreted the text and told you and applied it in so many ways, but because there is a father in the house <laughs> and a theological father for that matter, but, dearly beloved, let God be your salvation. Let God be your strength. Let God be your song. My saying of the Lord. The Lord is my salvation. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my song. The Lord is my, in summary, my triple S. Praise the Lord. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Thank you my brother Charles, for bringing to us the word of encouragement this morning. I know all of us maybe had some experiences, but the Lord has always been our salvation. The Lord has always been our song. In, uh, when we are in distress, when we are passing through raging waters, the Lord become our salvation. So thank you, and may God bless you. Now we are going to have a moment of uh, worshiping the Lord with our gifts.